So this is going to be a demo on how to install uh, Dynamic DNS using Route 53 uh, Amazon's um, DNS servers. Uh, I'm doing it against a Raspberry Pi 2 uh, located in my home. Inside my home I have port forwarding turned on on my, uh, on my outside firewall to forward the port to my Raspberry Pi so that I can use it for Octoprint which is um, a tool used for uh, 3D printer uh, access, web access. So uh, I, I went through the install once on a Raspberry Pi 1 and um, I got a Raspberry Pi 2 so I'm going to do it again. So from the console here I am on the network I can ping Google and now that works fine. Um, I need to install a couple tools. I have the name of the tools over here. First I need to install DNS utilities because I don't have dig by default with the Octopi image. So it's going to go grab that. It's going to take a little bit. I need to do an, uh, an update first. I forgot about that. I just brought this instance up. So Yeah. So while this is going, um, I got these. I got the script that I'm going to use for this uh, from another individual, and I'll link to him in the description. Um, the script worked, uh, and you can test it by running it. And um, from your uh, EC2 console, you can see uh, an access. Um, and uh, we'll see if we can show you where. I got to be somewhat wary about security with videotaping. Uh, all this, so I might have to edit it out. We'll see. Okay, now that that's done, back and install the DNS utilities. Like I said, this gives you a dig, which you don't have uh, by default with the, uh, the image that Octoprint offers. If you have roll your own, then you probably already have it. Okay, that's done. The other thing I need to install, which is the AWS CLI. Okay, now that that's installed, you need to run the AWS uh, config. And I'm going to put nothing in here so you can see the entries, and I'll show you where you can get them from. So, uh, the AWS key ID and access key, uh, you can get from the uh, EC2 console, which is behind, I'll show you where in a moment. Um, region, you can also get from here. Um, I'm not sure if it's actually all that important with this, uh, but you can configure it. Um, and I put, when I did mine, uh, default output format, none. I left it none. Uh, to get your access key, log into here, go to security credentials, and I don't have that set up, but and I'm going to remove the next section. But you click access keys, and if you don't have any created, you can create some, or you can use an existing one. Um, like I said, I'm not going to show you mine because that would defeat the purpose. But uh, you can see where you get them from. Um, once you have those, you fill in the values, and I am going to fill mine in and run through this again, and not this record uh, record that. Okay, so I've gone through the configure, and I just cleared my screen so those values were off the screen. Um, once you have it uh, configured, the script you get is from Will Warren's blog. He has a script, and he also goes through this 
how to do it is where I found it. Um, this is the script I grabbed right here and all you do is you fill in your zone ID and uh, your C name and the C name you're going to get from the, um, the root 53 config down here. You select your zone, um, create a C name for your existing domain, so I created a subdomain that I wanted to use. Um, and then you reference that, and I'm not going to, uh, to show you any further in here because um, it's, it's got keys and stuff in it. So um, I have a script, I, I have his script, I put it uh, in the home directory for the, for the Pi user in an existing directory for scripts. PW, and I tossed it in there. I haven't run this yet, um, but if I do run it, let me change the scripts. And now you see the files are there. And I gotta make that script executable. No. And there's some extra files here now that weren't there before. Um, a log file, which says that it ran, and the IP. And the way the IP works is it it does a dig, grabs your IP from the network, your public outside IP for the network, and tosses it in here. So now you can put this into cron and have it run every 30 minutes, every day, whatever you want. And it will update root 53 using the API if your IP has changed. Um, and I use uh, AWS for web hosting for other things, but I'm not putting the, the Pi, the, uh, the Octopi in the cloud because I need to have it connected to my printer. So when it's done running, you can go back to that security underneath your name, security credentials, Click on your access keys and it will show you a date timestamp for the last access and that will verify that you actually were able to connect and it updated your entry. Because um, the first time I had it I had it ran, I already had it hard coded for the value because I looked it up and I knew what it was. Um, but you can click on that and it will show you the, uh, the value. Uh, and that's all there really is to it. Once it's set up, and I have mine set up here. Um, I can then hit my public, and it takes a couple minutes for it to become, uh, to propagate. But once it's done propagating, yeah, this is my machine using my public address, so it's going, through, even though I'm inside my network, it's going on the external address, so therefore routing through my firewall to get to my, uh, my Raspberry Pi. Um, I only have the web port open, and I only have, uh, I have this app secured using the app security, um, and if you're using it for Octoprint, uh, I, I would recommend you do so. Um, but that's all there really is to it. It's um, really easy, and if you're already paying for uh, Amazon services, it doesn't cost you anything extra to do it. So you don't have to go through like one of the no IP or dynamic IP websites and pay, um, you know, some of them were for $10 a month, which to me seemed to a bit high. Um, this costs nothing other than the fact that I'm already paying uh, like I think 50 bucks a year for my hosting for Amazon and that includes everything I, I do and I think I pay a buck a month in miscellaneous fees. So um, yeah that's that's it. Uh, I'm gonna give you a link to uh, to Will's blog where you can get the actual code for the script. Um, you know, if you don't know how to put it in cron, uh, look it up. Um, it's not, not too hard. I'm not going to show you my cron. But uh, I have mine running every 30 minutes. But my IP tends to be pretty stable. So I could actually probably take it down to once a day. But I figure this way here, if they change it in the middle of the day on me, um, I'm only down for 30 minutes. So, yeah. That's, that's about it. So, until next time. Thanks for watching.